Hey guys, welcome back to Piston.my. Today, I have a very special car to tell you about. Talking about the Lexus LC500 convertible. It is arguably the most rarest Lexus in Malaysia. I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking that the LFA is even more rare, and you're probably right. But fact of the matter is, I've seen a couple of those on sale in some uh, classified websites. Where else I can confirm right here, right now, that there are only four units of the LC500 convertible in Malaysia. It's a very unique car. It's a very special car. I'll tell you why. Let's start with the front. The design is obviously very beautiful. This is what you call understated grandeur. Lexus style. The headlights, obviously, droopy as they may be, but gorgeous nonetheless. The triple headlights, really, they look good when, while standing still, they look better at night. This part here, this is the turn signal. This squarish piece over here, that's the headlight washer. This is the DRL daytime running light. Typically Lexus, all Lexus cars have the same DRL design, as do the, the spindle grille. Spindle grille has, was introduced, I think, about 10, 15 years ago. Still iconic, it has come to define Lexus cars. And when we move to the side, those 21-inch gloss wheels look fantastic. They look like no other gloss finishing over here. Brilliant. And another thing over here, is this air duct. This air duct is not just design, it's actually functional. And the, there's actually an outlet over here that channels air around the wheels to improve aerodynamics. There's also another duct over here, which is again functional. It too channels air from here around the wheels, again, for aerodynamics. But that's not all. The, it's a very understated, elegant car. Look at how the door handle just sits flush with the body of the car. To open, the, to, open it, to open it, press here and check this out. There's even a Lexus logo right here. Talk about attention to detail, right? Then we move to the back. Move to the back and you'll notice, the first thing you'll notice is just how massive this space is. So big you could have breakfast on this. It could serve as a breakfast table. The droopy headlight theme continues at the back here. And then, we come behind here, and it, you can sort of see the Lexus design language from the Lexus SC430 being continued with the LC500, because there are some subtle clues of the Lexus design language. And then, the exhaust, these are not Fox Pass exhaust. They are actually functional exhaust. They are twin exhaust sitting right underneath it. And you might be thinking, how do you open the, the boot? There are no, there's, not, there's no switches here. It's a very subtle switch located right over here. Check out this button. So you press this, and you get access to a not very big boot. Because after all, if you can afford 1.25 million for an LC500 convert, convertible, you could probably afford a Toyota Alpha to follow you from the back of where you keep, can keep everything that you need. So, well, it's probably good enough to, for a weekend's getaway. And then, I think I'm done with the, with the exterior. Let's go inside. Before we step inside, I want to show you this canvas roof and how it operates because it's a piece of art by itself and it takes 19 seconds for it to open and close and it's operable at speeds at about 50 kilometers per hour, which is quite decent because it, it means you don't really have to come to a standstill or you don't really have to slow down that much, even on the highway. Watch this. It's art in motion, I tell you. All right, let me 
let me close these windows for you. These seats are really some of the best seats that I've ever sat on. Brilliant, they're fantastic. And I really hope you get a chance to sit on them as well. They're ventilated, so which means it's perfect for Malaysian weather. Everything in here is really, really very, very nice. And uh, the steering wheel, of course, everything feels high quality. The shifters are pure aluminium. Aluminium, guys. And the switches for the roof, as well as the four windows, is subtly located in here. So it doesn't shout out at you anywhere. So very nice. And then this is the gear lever, of course. And it's also, it's almost like a BMW of sorts, but to operate it, turn it here. This is D. You just turn it to the right. This is N. And to the right above, this is reverse. And to put it into park, you just press this. And then this pad over here is known as the re remote touch interface. This is where you operate the audio functions as well as the GPS and stuff. This also comes, it's a bit confusing to use and a bit difficult even at, uh, especially when you're driving. So it can be a bit of a nuisance. So that's why I usually just plug in my, uh, my Apple iPhone and just let Apple CarPlay take over and that's just so much easier. While we are here, there's also this chunky aluminium volume rotator dial thing so this is really nice it, it's just really cool and this is of course the power for audio lah. and it comes with a Mark Levinson audio system together with a CD player which is fantastic and then over here you get a cup holder and this aluminium buttons over here control the air conditioning settings it's really really a very special place to be in and very comfortable. I also really like this analog clock over here, which is something I think a BMW and Mercedes can take note from because that seems to be a dying trend. Everything is so digitized nowadays. An analog clock is, dare I say it, refreshing. And so back here on the cockpit, this is where you control your drive modes. You push it up once, you go into sport, you push it up again, you go into Sport Plus. And push it down, Comfort, and you push it down again, Eco. All of this is reflected over here. And while I have your attention here, check this out. It's a moving RPM dial. And in the center, you get information like tire pressure monitor, engine temperature, fuel gauge, and your, if you're in Eco mode, it tells you how you're going to save the world, how much you're saving the world and such. And also outside temperature as well as a digital clock over there. But I hardly refer to that, I prefer that. So you press this again and it just moves to the right and all of that information is displayed over here as well as audio functions. I love it. This over here, this dial over here uh, controls traction control. If I press this, it tells me traction control is turned off. Don't want to do that when I have a massive engine. Get to that shortly. And if I push it down, it tells me I'm in snow mode. I think in Malaysia, you need a monsoon mode. So uh, if I press this button over here, it releases this not very big glove compartment. And the other thing that I really like is for the driver's side, you get the, the driver door, the door handle right down here. But I think you're gonna, but for, well, for the passenger, you get this really cool, very unique, flow, door handle flow that sort of gently blends into the entire dashboard. It's fantastic. It's so Lexus. And I really like these door handles as well. They're sort of like a claw. You know, it just sort of just protrudes out from the door, like gently asking you to just caress it. It's a very, very nice interior. This, this seats are fantastic. Of course, there's not a lot of space at the back. And uh, somebody has asked me to actually <laughs> try to get behind. I'm not a contortionist, and I don't think I'll fit. So I'm not gonna, even going to try to make a fool of myself, because I'm quite sure I will. Anyway, I'm done with the interior. Let's go see the engine. While Italian cars like to put their engines on display, because those are really a work of art, so is this 5-litre naturally aspirated V8. Check this out. Ah, 
I think it's beautiful. Of course, this is all plastic. This is all just a cover, but it's all about design because this is the absorber mounting. And in pure Lexus fashion, they've even made this look good. How I really like the Lexus attention to detail because everything about it is so beautiful. Now the engine, again, like I said, 5-litre V8, naturally aspirated V8, is a refreshing departure from the world of force induction and electronic powertrains, electric powertrains. Because this car, this engine, is a dying breed. It's actually one of those, such as the Sumatran Rhino, if I can say that. This is actually... <laughs> It belongs in a museum, to be honest, because we are never ever going to see a nat big naturally aspirated V8 engine, not anytime soon at least. It produces about 470 horsepower and about 500 something newton meters of torque. It does the 0 to 100 in about 4.7 seconds, 4.6 seconds, but it does, uh, does so very, very gently. Of course, you get a, sh a shove in the seat. It does so very gently, but it definitely doesn't sound like it. Let's hear it. So, before we, I, I let you hear the engine, check out the starting procedure. So you put your foot on the brake, press the start, and the steering wheel, check out the growl. Steering wheel comes out to greet you. The, st the seat pushes you in front to make it much easier to, to reach the steering wheel as well. Again, typical Lexus. Now, let's hear the engine. So nice, that's a typical naturally V8, naturally aspirated V8 sound. Now I'm gonna drive this car over the weekend. I've got some really nice plans with this car. So I'm gonna give you, bring you my driving impressions as I go about. For now, I'm just really excited to drive this car. I'll bring you more. So I spent about seven to 800 kilometers with this car already. Uh, we are in Mersing together with a friend of mine, Sudesh, who's holding the camera. We went to JB yesterday, we had Mersing, and after this we are heading to Rompin, then back in KL. I thought what better car to do this road trip than with the Lexus SC500 convertible. And I'll tell you something, it's an amazing car. No wonder the price tag, 1.25, 1.3 million. It's one of the finest cars in this segment. Of course, there are others as well, like the Bentley Continental GT drop top. Uh, of course, there's the S-Class Coupe, and there's some really nice cars as well. But this is the very definition of what Lexus is capable of doing because seriously it performs like a sports car uh, it, it has all the luxury refinements and I'm very impressed by it because it lays down power like a proper sports car it handles like a proper sports car but the, feel, the steering wheel the feel of the steering wheel the feel of the brakes are just, are just that but for what it's meant to do it's very very impressive uh, it's seriously quiet when the top is up which is very surprisingly consi considered that uh, considering that it comes with a canvas roof so the interior very very silent uh, when the roof is up in place you get five different driving modes you get sport plus you get sport you get comfort you get normal you get eco and all of them do exactly what they say they will sport is for that mode when you feel like you know, you feel like uh, you want to drive faster but you don't want to shift yourself and all. Especially on the highway, Sport is perfect. But Sport Plus is when things get a little bit hairy because it really does transform into a proper sports car. Uh, normal, comfort, eco, well, it just slows things down a notch and you know, you're just cruising along. It's very, very refined. Right now, we're going to take it to Rompin. And I really am amazed by the amount of feedback that you're getting from the car, the amount of luxury that is, because I can't find anything to complain about, except that the fact that maybe the brakes are a bit on the squishy side, they feel like a bit spongy. But other than that, it's a beautiful looking car. I've never got so much attention because there are only four units of the Lexus LC500 convertible. So this is a car that people don't see very often or this is a car that people have never seen 
doesn't only look amazing, it sounds amazing as well. Uh, it goes, it performs like a proper sports car as well, but yeah. So I'm going to, this is my interim report. I'm going to drive it more to, to Rompin and I'm going to return it tomorrow evening back to Lexus Malaysia. I'm just having such a good time with this car that I could go on and on with it. So I'll bring you more. Alright guys, so it's Tuesday, it's time to return the car and I've spent maybe about 800 kilometers in this car driving all around uh, southern Malaysia and predominantly in Johor, Pahang and of course Selangor, Nagari Sundlan and I've had plenty of time to spend with this car I didn't just want to park it, I was looking forward to driving it as much as I can and I'll tell you something that driving this is such an amazing experience Simply, it's, it's the most basic of uh, recipes when it comes to creating luxury GT drop-top cars. You know, big naturally aspirated V8 up front. Sounds amazing, it delivers powers on the go. Uh, of course, it, it puts out about 460 horsepower, uh, 550 Newton meters of torque. It's not, the, it's not the fastest neither, is it the most powerful, but the way it lays down the power, it's just fantastic, seriously. These, these seats, as I've said earlier, is, are some of the most amazing seats that I've sat in. And one thing that I really like about driving this Lexus is that how driver-centric everything is, all the controls, you know, um, I, I, even the auto start, uh, the auto headlight button is just, is just a switch over here. Uh, let me show you. It's just this switch over here. And you know, I was driving through the uh, Rompin to uh, to Pahang roads yesterday, which in the, in the, in the night, yeah, nearly at about ten o'clock at night, which you can imagine was pitch dark. But controlling the automatic headlights was just as simple as my pinky finger just going here and just touching this, just pressing this button, and it's just so easy, so accessible. Uh, the remote touch interface, have, as I've said, and plenty other motoring journals have said. It can get a little bit complicated, especially when you are on the move, when you're driving. Uh, if, let's say you want to change your air conditioning settings, your seat ventilation settings, all of this. So this RTI can get a little bit more, uh, can get unnecessarily complicated. But I think that will evolve as time goes by. Uh, Quality-wise, there's anything that has that L badge quality is not going to be an issue and the fact that there are only four in Malaysia including this one makes this one of the rarest cars in Malaysia so that also means that everybody was just dying to take a look they were cramming their necks to take a look and I also I use this a lot this moving dial over here especially when you're touring uh, so you know you want to you want to take a look at your uh, tire pressure monitoring uh, tire pressure over here then of course your navigation, your audio settings. I was changing a lot of the songs as I was going around. Uh, this is your cruise control, your lane departure assist, messages. All of these things were all just displayed there and it's just so easy to access, so easy, easily readable. And what I really like, also another thing, I just, I, I hope that we can capture this because I, I find this to be very, very cool. Okay, let me get the camera. So I just turned the car off, yeah? Um, so when we turn it on, check out the display. Check out the Lexus display. I hope that you can see this. Uh, the heads up display, no, but everything, all, there's a lot of artwork that is going on the head, heads up display as well. So it's just Lexus intuition to the human, uh, human body you know they just kind of know what you are going to do or what you need even before you know that you need it as well and having said that i just want to tell you a story about some moments where i thought that the car was gonna you know oversteer but somehow the uh, traction control sort of knew that and right before it actually uh, lost grip it was already cutting power to the engine 
So very, very smart. The powertrain on this thing is incredibly smart. The uh, gearbox, 10-speed gearbox, silky smooth. Anyway, I think I've spoken too much. If you are looking, in, if you are in the market for an amazing car with an amazing driving experience, a future classic, a must-have, do consider the Lexus LC500. Make it a convertible. You'll, you'll thank me for it. Anyway, I'm Keshi Dillon, this Piston.my. I just told you about the LC500 convertible. Thank you for watching.